One, two, three. Voila. Like fake it for the intro. Maybe? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, should we should we then put it on the lazy Susan and like I can lift it and spin? <laughs> That's even more dramatic. <laughs> <laughs> uh, too bad you don't have your smoke machine. I I do. <laughs> you do. <laughs> I love tortilla española. It is such a great party dish. Actually, it's one of those things that you can make ahead of time. It's actually better the next day and really great at room temp. So you can make it, forget about it, put it in the fridge, and the next day, pull it out before your guests arrive, let it come to room temp and serve it, and it's going to be absolutely amazing. I wanted to make this super, super easy, and so I've made this recipe to basically be foolproof. As long as you have a non-stick skillet and a good knife, you're totally set. So the first thing that we're gonna do is prep some of the vegetables and get those to cooking. You can totally use your knife, but I feel like the best way to get even slices for both the onion, the peppers, and the potatoes is to use a mandolin. So all I'm gonna do is trim out the top and bottom of my onion. I'm gonna cut it in half, and that way I know it will fit on the mandolin. That makes me so nervous, Rick. Oh, <laughs> no! <laughs> Okay, so the peppers and onions are up first. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna season them. This dish takes a lot of salt. So it's gonna take fully one tablespoon of kosher salt, but I'm gonna divide it in half. So I'm putting a teaspoon and a half in the peppers and onions and half a teaspoon of my freshly ground black pepper and half a cup of olive oil. I know that sounds like a lot, but we need the olive oil, we need all of that seasoning to help everything cook down and release all those flavors. Okay, so now we're ready to like get this started. Okay, so I'm gonna cook these vegetables down on medium heat. I don't wanna get any color. All that I'm looking to do is cook them down. So they're gonna release all of their liquid. You'll see it pooling up around. And then slowly over the course of about eight minutes, all of that liquid will evaporate and they're gonna like shrink in size. They're almost gonna like cut themselves in half. And once they're flat, all the liquid's gone, then I know it's time to add the potatoes. Okay, so while the peppers and onions are cooking down, we're gonna work on the potatoes. So, I get to use my mandolin again. You ready, Savas? Yeah. <laughs> Can I deal you some potatoes? Just remember, do not try this at home. I wanna offer my deepest and most sorrowful apology for the reckless use of a mandolin. Mandolins are no joke. They are a tool, not a toy. And I understand that now. Remember, always respect the mandolin. Okay, so I put the potatoes in the same bowl that I mixed the onions and peppers in. No need to dirty another bowl. And so now the remaining half cup of oil goes in. The remaining teaspoon and a half of salt goes in. And the remaining half teaspoon pepper goes in. Now, 
Toss, toss, toss. I love tossing potatoes. Okay, I have a few more minutes before the peppers and onions are ready, so I'm gonna beat all my eggs. Okay, so the onions and peppers are ready. They look really good. They're just starting to caramelize, so I know that that's my clue that we need to take them off. And so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna mix them into the potatoes. I find it easier to do it in the large bowl where I can get in, make sure everything is well incorporated without fear that they're gonna like splatter on the stove or come off the side of the, the, uh, the pan. So I'm just gonna pour these in there now. I'm just gonna gently mix. Just be careful because the peppers and onions are very, very hot. And now these are ready to go back into our pan for the second cook. Okay, so we're gonna cook it on medium. I'm gonna cover it. What that's gonna do is it's gonna create like a little mini oven on the stove. And so the potatoes are gonna steam and they're gonna cook more evenly. If I left it uncovered, the top potatoes would stay cold. The potatoes on the bottom would start to brown. This way, everything's gonna be nice and evenly cooked. I'm gonna check them probably about every 10 minutes to just check for doneness. Depending on the type of potato you're using and also how high your flame is, it may take uh, you know between 20 to 35 minutes for the potatoes to get really tender. You want them to be cooked all the way through before you add the eggs. Okay, so while the potatoes are cooking, we are going to start on the romesco. So it's a little bit different because I wanted to kind of play up more brighter flavors. Uh, we already got the peppers in the tortilla, so I wanna play up the tomato aspect of this. Today I'm gonna to use cherry tomatoes. I feel like cherry tomatoes have much better flavor than normal grocery store tomatoes, particularly in off season. So I'm gonna throw those down and six cloves of garlic in their skin. We're gonna roast these on high heat. I wanna blister the tomatoes. I don't really wanna cook them down. I just want to get some nice char marks on them. All right, these are gonna go into a 450 degree oven. Okay, so the tomatoes are nicely blistered. I'm gonna go get them and show you. I'm gonna check to make sure that my potatoes are done because the absolute worst thing in the universe with uh, making a tortilla española is when you have like a piece of undercooked potato in there. So these need to be perfectly soft and tender. And I'm pretty certain that they are, but we just wanna check. And so we just wanna make sure that they're easily cuttable and this is like completely tender. I could actually make mashed potatoes with it. So I know it's done. So as you can see, there's quite a lot of oil in there, which we needed to make sure that all of the potatoes were completely cooked through. I don't need that oil anymore. I'm gonna drain it out, but don't think that we're gonna waste this. We're gonna use it to make our romesco sauce and anything that's left, I'm gonna keep, and I'm just gonna use it to saute vegetables. To be honest, I actually made this yesterday and I had, with my leftover oil, I scrambled some eggs in it. It was really delicious. It tasted like onions and peppers and potatoes. Okay, I wanna leave a little bit of oil in there because I still want the egg to not stick to the pan and this is a really good non-stick, but again, the oil will give us a little bit of insurance that nothing's gonna to stick to the bottom. And I'm just gonna run my spatula underneath to make sure nothing is stuck and nothing is stuck. And I'm just gonna even out some of the veg and make sure I have nice pretty layers. And then we're just gonna take our eggs and give them one last little whiskey whisk. 
And then we're just gonna pour this over the potatoes. Now, I'm gonna use a spatula to kind of lift up the potatoes and make sure that egg gets in between all of those layers. Okay, all right. So now I'm just gonna spread this out evenly and we're gonna put the lid back on. And same thing as before, we're gonna let those eggs gently steam themselves set. So it's gonna take probably about 10, 15 minutes, but we will check in about 10 minutes. Okay, so while the eggs are setting, I'm going to work on the romesco. I'm actually gonna do this in a molcajete. You can use a mortar and pestle, you can use a food processor. You can use a blender, but there's just not enough of the sauce to actually make it worth the effort. So I would recommend either a mortar and pestle or a food processor. So first thing I'm gonna do is throw in all my almonds. And so these are my toasted almonds that are obviously now cooled. All right, so that's about half of them. I'm gonna just give them a little bit of a grind. Okay, so now to finish our romesco, I'm actually gonna use some of the reserved oil that I poured out of the skillet. So I'm gonna go ahead and put three tablespoons in. And like I said, make sure you save that oil because it's great for all your sauteing needs. And I'm gonna put some sherry vinegar or vinegar de Jerez. If you don't have this vinegar, you can also use red wine vinegar or even apple cider vinegar, but I feel like the sherry vinegar has like a very distinctive uh, Spanish flavor. And depending on your tomatoes, I know that these uh, tomatoes actually are pretty tart. So I'm only gonna use one tablespoon, but if your tomatoes, let's say, were really off season and didn't have a lot of flavor, you can go ahead and go up to two tablespoons. And then I have some pimenton, which is smoked paprika. And this is very, very classic Spanish flavor. I'm putting two teaspoons in. You can also use hot paprika if you'd like. And then just give this a little stir. Now I'm gonna give this a taste for seasoning. Well. Wow. All right, you're gonna love this sauce. Ooh, I can't wait. I really, I just want some bread in this sauce and I'm, I'm fine. But I will actually want some of the tortilla as well. Okay, so it's time to flip. Okay, so to quote the amazing Julia Child, you just have to have the courage of your convictions. So I am going to flip mine out onto a board. You can use a platter or a serving plate, something that's dramatic. Um, the, what is key here is making sure that you shake the pan to make sure that everything is loose and nothing stuck. If you see the entire tortilla move inside the pan, then you know it's ready to flip. All right, here we go. With the courage of our convictions, one, two, Three. Voila. So excited about this. Mm. I feel like it's tapas time and I have to whisper. I don't know why, but whatever. It's really, really beautiful and I'm so excited. All of my favorite things, eggs, potato, olive oil, romesco, bread, topo chico, all here. All right, I'm gonna go in. Not like I actually didn't have some last weekend when I was developing this recipe, but. 
Mm. It's so good. It's so flavorful. It's amazing to me how much the potato picks up on the onion and the, the red bell pepper. It just kind of melts into the dish and you're not really aware of them, but the flavor is just there. Okay, so I have been dreaming of this moment. The romesco and the bread. Oh, so good. Mm. There's so many things happening there. The texture of the toasted almonds and the, the smashed tomatoes, the little bit of charring on it, so you get like a, a little hit of the bitterness from the char, but then that pop of brightness from the sherry vinegar. It just pairs so well on a good crusty bread. You are gonna love it. This is a simplified version of a tortilla española. And don't forget, if you like tortillas, if you like me, if you like tortilla recipes, hit like and subscribe and you will be notified as soon as there's another Sweet Heat episode. And to celebrate spring, our next episode, we are going to be making a sour cream and spring onion wedge salad. So stay tuned. I love that you just keep your smoke machine in the car now. Yeah, he's like, you never know what you're <laughs>